Welcome back and thank you for tuning in. Right now on my table I have one set of two hemothrop reactors and two sets of promethium relay pipes. And in this video I'm gonna focus on how I paint the pipes and in the next one I'll focus on all the details on the reactors and to make it easier to follow I'm gonna focus on this specific piece. As you can see, it has already been primed using Army Painter's Gunmetal Primer. And now I'm going to do a first highlight with Chainmail Silver from Vallejo Game Air. And as this is an airbrush ready color, all I add is a little bit of silver. And then I'm gonna add a bit of silver to the mix, uh, about 50-50. And don't mind uh, how it looks on the pipe itself. All we're trying to highlight right now is the framework. So once it's dry and the airbrush has been cleaned, we'll take the wet palette and some game color, brassy brass. with a tiny bit of thinner medium so I can add it as needed and I have two brushes on hand for this one large and one detail brush and what I'm gonna do now is simply pick out all the ornamentation and some of the pipe work just to uh, give some nice variation and the pipes themselves are gonna be painted over with typhus corrosion so no need to be too careful around the ornamentation. Actually, you can pretty much glob it on and spread it out. Like this. And if you happen to paint some brass over uh, some of the bitch and want to stay metallic, you can simply take some uh, some chainmail silver or some gunmetal and fix it up. It doesn't matter if the metallic color is not exactly the same as the one you painted over because once we wash it it'll get textured by variation anyway. So <laughs> it's all about making the surface look interesting without taking too much attention away from the miniatures on the board. So. Once you have a nice even coat and have done any necessary cleanup, make sure that the paint is completely dry before you continue. And if you just want the scenery done in a hurry, you can skip this whole brass step and just keep it silver colored. To darken it all down a bit and give some texture, I'll take some Agrax Earth Shade and some Nuln Oil. and pour quite a bit into a palette like this. And like this, letting it mix. And then proceed to wash anything that is not the main pipe. It doesn't matter if anything gets on the main pipe, but no need to waste the wash trying to cover it. Now that the wash is fully dry, I'll take some Chainmail Silver from Game Color. Put on a little piece of card and grab a very big brush. And 
and give the pipe a rough dry brush. And that's all over both the brass and the silver. And as mentioned, I'm now going to give the main pipe two coats of typhus corrosion. And be sure that the first coat is completely dry before you add the second. And no need to water this down, I always use it straight out of the pipe. And if you make any mistakes, like I just did there, it's a good idea to have a cutting stick at hand, because it swoops it right up. So, as you can see, after the first coat, the corrosion is still a little too transparent for what we want. So, we give it a second layer and let it completely dry before we continue. And before you go on, I recommend changing your paint water, as it should be pretty nasty by now. Next up, we take these, there are two in each set, and some Risa Rust, and pretty much give it an overbrush all around up till just before the rim there, and try to make it fade slightly. As you might have noticed, I really love how uh, these two effect paints work together. Like this. And then, some secret weapon, sewer water. And that'll be for the inside of the tubes up till about here. May it seem like something actually used to run in the pipe. And also wherever the pipes terminate in one of these uh, lids or grills up to about the same height just make a line and fill it out back to our main piece the next thing we're gonna paint is the lamp Sitting on the side, there is a lamp on each of the long pieces, as well as two small lamps on the control board pieces. And I'm gonna use first a layer of Avalanche Sensor, and then a layer of Flash Kids Yellow. So I'll let this dry and add this, a second layer of Avalon Sunset before I go on to the flash kits.
and once again two maybe three layers to make it nice and even and following that I'm gonna add a real easy OSL effect using Lamentus Yellow the Citadel Glaze in the airbrush and simply from uh, slightly beneath the source of light start to really carefully build up with the glaze and then let the glaze dry and repeat the process three or four times so now that I'm happy with the OSL effect I'll take some Vallejo gunmetal and do some quick cleanup in places like this where there is a not good looking smear of corrosion the point is not to make uh, the whole thing look clean just to make it look not painted we really want it to look weathered and dirty and i'm also going to re-establish the grill in front of the lamp and with that this piece is pretty much complete so now we're gonna take these control panels and start by adding some color to the various uh, buttons on the control boards and for that I'm gonna use Iosan Green and Kato Red Base from P3 and the idea is to just pick out a random combination of the two colors Next, for all the remaining instruments, I'm going to start by, cover, by covering the metallics with Rackarth Flash and then bring them up to a near white with Palette Rich Flash. And of course, it's really important to keep the layers thin because we don't want to obscure the little needles. And with that then, we're ready to add some purity white and that'll just be for the center of the instruments. Like this. And then we just have to wait for that to dry and paint in the needles with some black and if you make some small mistakes just go back and neaten up with purity white when it's dry and finally to add the illusion of times past I take Sephiram Sabia and Lamain Medium and mix them 50-50. And this effect works best if it's kept real subtle. And finally, I'm gonna take some Vallejo Matte Varnish in the airbrush and work my way around all the pieces, giving them two coats with plenty of drive time in between. And here they are. I find that this is a very uh, fast and efficient way of painting these relay pipes and I obviously hope you found it useful too. Let me know in the comments below if there's something you would have done differently or if you have any questions. Also remember that Fridays are hobby tips so for the next couple of weeks that will be scratch built terrain while I'll continue painting up um, terrain kits every Wednesday
And next Wednesday, we will add these two bad boys to the relay system. And this Friday will be an alternative way to make walkways. So, please like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, take care and bye bye.